Okay, welcome. Uh, I hope you all have had a great conference so far. This is kind of the second last talk, so you know you guys must be ready to go home. So let's. Uh, so just a brief introduction. My name is Adrian Cock. I'm the product manager for Android, and here with me is. Yes, I'm Steve Beebe. I'm an engineering manager on the uh, Android Mobile at Work, Mobile Iron Go, and Email Plus 2.0 for App Connect Android products. That's a long title. Um, <laughs> And anyway, we're going to talk to you about certificates today. Certificates with Android, uh, primarily because you know we've had a lot of uh, complaints from customers or confusion about where certificates are managed in Android, where they go, how they're configured, right? So we're going to give you a primer on how this complexity is and how we we see it, and so hopefully you go away with some better understanding of how certificates can be managed and deployed within Android. So before let's let's start first, right? Um, uh, I, I don't know how many of you have kids. I have a 10-year-old son. Uh, he t came up to me uh, last week and said, you know, Daddy, Daddy, do you know if you hit your head against the wall, you can work up to 150 calories an hour? I was like, what? Where do you hear that from? Oh, Jack heard it, found it on the internet. So it must be true, right? <laughs> so that was like, okay. Uh, so the, the, the preface to this is really... Trust and authenticity in a digital age, right? Uh, we look at the internet for everything, you know, I look at Twitter for news, uh, and this happened in 2013. The AP blog uh, turned up with a, a blog post about a bombing in the White House. Okay, so it's 2013, you know that nothing like this happened. It was a fake tweet, right? Somebody hacked into the AP account and it ended up with a sharp drop in the wall, uh, Dow Jones index. So. Uh, security matters, uh, trust matters, and username and password is insufficient today to make sure that your assets and your information is up to snuff. So let's talk about pr public key certifi uh, certificates. Many of you are security professionals. You probably know uh, a lot about PKI. I want to go through some of the basics just to uh, set some grounding and talk about the different type of certificates and where you might see them uh, in Android and how Mobile Iron might manage them. So first of all, uh, certificates are a means of uh, establishing the identity. There are two ways of establishing the identity. Uh, I need to know that Steve is who he is. He needs to know that Adrian, I am who I am. So, uh, and the reason I know Steve is because when I first came into the company, uh, he was introduced to me by the hiring manager, right? Say, hey, Adrian, this is Steve, so I know I trust my hiring manager because he pays my uh, salary, uh, and because of that, I, tr I trust that he, Steve, is who he is. So there's a so concept of a trust chain, right? A trust chain as in, uh, uh, I need to be introduced to somebody uh, or represented by a certain person that uh, validates the identity of both the subject and uh, the, the opposite recipient. Now, most trust chains have an expiry as well. Okay, now until I go see now, I probably know that Steve is Steve, but I have an expiry date too, right? I don't have my perfect memory forever. Trust chains have expiries as well, so uh, certificates don't last forever. Every year or so, uh, you probably want to get them renewed. And then there's the identity, who that is. So this certificate was pulled from uh, Microsoft's uh, website. So you have the Microsoft's uh, common name, which is their website URL, encoded so that when I visit the website, I know that this is signed by um, a trust root, and it validates that this is the website that this certificate is representing. Why this is important? Our devices and our networks are, are open nowadays. Mobile first means that I can work anywhere and be productive. You employees can go into a Starbucks, they can work from an airport, they can work anywhere there's a Wi-Fi network. Well, guess what? I, I could set up a Google Starbucks Wi-Fi SSID right here. And some of you who've been to, to Starbucks would have automatically connected to it. So there's a, always a chance of a man in the middle attack and the certificates help prevent that. So when we look at a trust chain, um, there's kind of a hierarchy, right? You've got trusted root certificates which are built into your device. So whether it's Firefox or Chrome or a browser uh, or Android or iOS, there's a root, set of root certificates. There are a few hundred of them that are trusted around the world. So, Basically, the reason why we trust these root, root certificates is we trust the device manufacturer, right? I trust Samsung, I trust Apple to identify these trusted certificates and put it inside the device. So that's the root of trust. I buy this device whom I trust. Now, if I go and buy a no-name manufacturer, 
Could they mess with this? Absolutely, they can mess with the root certificate, so that's important. Now, having said that, there are intermediate certificates uh, that are put inside here. Um, so companies like yourself may purchase a certificate, a CA cert, that allows you to issue other certs, right? So you might be Microsoft, you might be Google, and you might have your own certificate, and you use it to issue certificates to your employees so that you validate their identity, right? You will say that this is employee John, this is Mark, and these are all the identity certs that are generated from this intermediate certificate. Uh, you might have some of these identity certs uh, part of, uh, let's say, a web server that you post out on the internet. You could say that this web server is Microsoft.com. Uh, when I, somebody visits it, this is what it is. So the intermediate certificate authority is important, right? Uh, if your intermediate certificate authority is signed by a trusted root certificate, it's no problem. When I go visit your uh, secure website, uh, I will follow up to this. I don't know who this is, but I have the trusted root certificate in my device key store and I know that this is a trusted chain. Okay. Now what happens when you want to roll out your own intermediate certificate authority? Because purchasing this is a costly expense. There's thousands of dollars because there's liability that is put forward by these authorities. So before we get there, let's walk through how the certificates get generated uh, along the path. We have an Android client. When an Android client needs to generate an identity cert, uh, basically uh, we uh, send a request up to our mobile iron core. Now the mobile iron core doesn't really generate the cert itself. It basically generates a private key, right? So the client requests, uh, creates a certificate request. Uh, the server generates the private key and the associated public key and sends it to a certificate authority. So we've worked with a number of certificate uh, authorities like VeriSign, Entrust, Symantec, uh, and also an open protocol called SCEP. Uh, and some of you may have Microsoft SCEP server implemented in-house. So this is a certificate authority that actually generates the certs to be sent back to the client. Right? So this signed certificate is returned to the server. Now, at no time does the certificate authority actually see the private key. They basically just sign the public key. Uh, this server packages both the cert and the public uh, keys and send it down to the client. Okay, so now the client is equipped with an identity cert and it can use it for uh, representing who they are to a recipient. So common users are, for example, if I want to send an email, I want to have it signed or if I want to log into a Wi-Fi uh, uh, endpoint, I can use that certificate to represent my uh, credentials, or uh, some web servers have certificate client authentication enabled. So let's talk about where these certificates are stored. The certificates are stored today primarily in an Android device key store, but there's not just one key store in Android, right? There are multiple key stores. So every Android device comes with a device key store, and that key store actually has two different incarnations. There's the app key and VPN key store, and as well as a Wi-Fi key store. Uh, this split was enforced in Android 4.3 onwards, uh, where the Wi-Fi key stores are put, placed separately from the device key stores. Uh, and these are used by the Android OS services. So things like Wi-Fi, for example, is supplied and uh, enabled by Android itself. It references the device key store. Okay, so if you want to deploy a Wi-Fi key store, a uh, key to a Wi-Fi, you need to put it in the device key store. And that's a Wi-Fi key store here that is actually where you need to place it. So there's specific product documentation in both core and cloud about how to push this into the device. The next set of uh, use of this uh, is, for example, apps. Apps like email. Email, if you want it to reference uh, the key store, the app may not actually manage the keys itself it might actually reference the key store. So what you want to pass to the app is an alias that say, you, Mr. App, Mr. Gmail, or Mr. Divide, use this as your identity certificate. So you don't actually give the certificate to the app, you tell it to pick up that key from the device key store. Okay, so that's second model. And then the third model is maybe the app decides I want to manage all the certs within my app itself. Okay, so examples are a number of uh, VPN clients actually store the certs within the client so itself. So like our MI tunnel, uh, in order to provision the certificate, you don't push it down to the key store because the app doesn't look into the key store. It looks into the certificate that's actually provisioned in the internal key store. Okay, 
So this is kind of the complexity of all these deployments where uh, you need to understand where the certificates end up. It's, I, I just don't put it in a single key store and have everybody look at, at it. Depending on the app, depending on the service, depending on whether the app has its internal key store, you need to provision the keys in the right place, both the ID certificate as well as the CA certificate. Let's look at some examples. Um, Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi key store uh, certificates are actually stored in the device key store, right? So there's no separate app key store because there's no, no separate app, but you need to put it into the device certificate uh, in order for it to be uh, uh, accepted. Uh, for the browser and other Android services, uh, these keys are also stored in the device key store. So this is an example of an app like Chrome or Fire... Uh, I'm not sure if Firefox stores it in the key store, but Chrome or Firefox does. Okay, so some apps, for example, like Chrome and Firefox, actually stores the certificate in the device key store or references the certificate in the device key store. So in order to provision it with the right certificate, you have to deploy the certificate into the key store and then configure Chrome, uh, and I'm not sure Firefox can be configured through AFW, but configure Chrome to reference that certificate. Exchange and email, this is where things become a, a lot more complicated. Uh, so with email, there's a concept of identity cert and a CA cert. So identity cert tells, tells uh, uh, tells the server who I am. So I'm Adrian, I've got this identity cert and that's packaged with my email. Uh, CA cert allows me to verify the identity of the server I'm talking to. So if I'm talking to mail.mobileiron.com and I see a certificate from that email server, I need to verify uh, if its trust is, uh, is, is within the trust chain. Now if I don't have my mail server signed by a root certificate, I need to make sure that the intermediate certificate, certificate authority needs to be deployed to the device. And this certificate authority is actually deployed in the device key store, not the app key store. All right? So to configure certificates for certain email programs, you need to push different certificates in different locations. All right? I hope this is as clear as mud for all of you. Um, then VPN. Most VPNs have certificates uh, stored in the app key store. Uh, but again, the CA certificates, if your, uh, these certificates are self-signed or signed through your own CA certs, you need to push the CA certs into the device key store because the authentication of the chain will be done from the device key store. Right? And then all the other apps, right? So, um, we'll see in one of the other pages how some of the apps have configured some of the certificates in a different location. And I think Steve will actually walk through a demo of how some of these certificates are imported into Android and how it's configured. All right. Should we Little play more. it from here? No, we can't play it from here, unfortunately. We have to use a different player. So, a little bit of magic. Looking over my shoulder, driving backwards, all that good stuff. Um, in a second, if you would. Um, just to intro this video, um, what we're going to do is we've got the Android browser. And I've set a uh, FreeNAS server at home, deployed a custom trust, uh, trust chain to FreeNAS. Um, a lot of corporations that I've worked with at MobileIron use their own in-house trust chains. So this is an example. If you've deployed an in-house trust chain to, say, one of your uh, HR websites or you know, your uh, bug tracking, bug management system, things like that, and you want your Android devices to be able to access them, this is an experience before and after managing certificates with mobile iron. So, Adrian, if you could go ahead. Screen a lot of people are familiar with, and probably also familiar with this screen if you use mobile iron Go. I hit reload there, and now I can access my FreeNAS server. So very quickly, you're able to deploy a, cu a custom cert chain to the device. Uh, I picked the browser as an example because of the browser, A, a lot of people are familiar with that nasty warning message that you get when you go to an untrusted site. B, a lot of uh, other clients like VPN or Exchange will fail silently rather than failing in a really obvious way like the browser does. So A, good for demos. B, <laughs> um, yeah. Pretty straightforward. So I, I guess at this time we open it for questions. It's a small group, so we can do this live here, or you can just come up and we can answer your questions one on one. 
All right. Well, thank you for attending the conference and enjoy the rest of your day.